Hello and what is up you filthy animals, my name is Deventrix and today we are going to be looking at the new, the recently improved, the recently buffed E25. Yeah. Now this tank was awesome before and now it's just, oh my gosh, it's mm, uh, it's so, so, so good now. I don't want uh, in this video we're going to be looking at a couple of the, the battles I had right after the, the update. And I also want to just, you know, talk about the 25. Uh, this tank has always been an, an extremely special tank of mine and uh, I love it even more now. I've had a lot of history with it, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Uh, so here's just the battle I've had in it. Um, we you do end up winning this battle, even though uh, we're down a couple tanks. And this shows what you know this tank really excelled at before, which was uh, sniping. Uh, as you can see, I ended up being rammed by the Centurion. I thought that was a funny moment I would include. Uh, but now we're going to the next battle, and we're going to be talking about the, the buffs of the tank. Uh, now, before this tank has always been good, as you can see, it goes super, super fast. It has a, you know, a machine gun of a gun, and it was always a great tank before, but now it's even better. As you can see, we're going to pop up on this uh, T-54 Mod 1, which has an extremely good armor profile, but you can see we're just going to be able to pound that tank. Um, and, you know, that that first part, it was it was all all gray. We could have shot anywhere and we would depend, which is an extremely good thing of this tank. Uh, I'd say the one weakness of this tank before was its penetration, and now they completely fixed that. They threw that out the window, and now this tank is, <laughs> I would say, probably a little bit overpowered, which I'm not going to complain about it. This tank is fast, has great camo, has an excellent gun, and it has everything that anyone would ever want in a tank destroyer. Something else that's really nice about this tank is it can do more than just be tank destroyer. As you can see, the, be the beginning part of this match, I stayed back and I tried to, you know, snipe, tried to lend fire support, but there's no targets to shoot at. So I drove forward, and this is something that this tank excels at. Here I'm going to go, and I'm going to go and race toward the back of this SU and just lay waste with my, like, 3,000 DPM in this tank. And... I love this tank for the reason that it can get up close and personal. It can, you know, brawl. It can dish out the damage. It has extremely good traverse numbers. It has extremely an extremely good gun. And I would say it's one of the best brawlers at this tier. Not to start out, though. Uh, in the beginning of a match, you should always, you know, try to stay back. Try to, you know, get the scope of the battle. But afterwards, you can go and you can single out your targets. And as, as you can see, I've singled out this uh, Santa Mill right here, and I'm just going to race forward, and he is going to want to shoot me, but he can't, because I just race forward past the gun, and now I'm going to try to face hug him and shoot him at the same time, and this poor Mill, he cannot do anything, and I am right up there, and I am just pouring in shots, and then we end up killing him. Uh, our team won that pretty handily, which is great for us right here. Um, take a look at the ending result screens, third class, not that much damage, but I just want to include it for the fact that it showcased, you know, some of the strengths of the E25. Uh, now this battle, I'm going to do a lot more damage. Um, this battle, I'm also going to showcase one of my favorite spots on Winter, Malinovka. Uh, and we'll get to that part, I'll point it out once we get there. But as it can start, this is I think the second battle I played after the buff and I was so excited. Uh, you might be able to notice, but I apparently have two APCRs. It was a really weird bug. And whenever I would try to ch uh, change to the higher pen APCR, which is supposed to be heat, it always crashed my game. Uh, I'm going to have to talk to Wargaming about that, but it was it was a fun bug. And, you know, after the buff, you don't really have to change into your uh, premium ammunition all that much, especially when you were top tier, tier 7. Uh, there's almost no reason to. You can pen pretty much anything anywhere. Uh, but it's always nice to have the heat. Um to, you know, be able to penetrate the, the higher tier targets. Something nice about having, you know, higher standard penetration is that you can save money on credits and you can earn more money, which is what this tank was designed to do, is to grind credits. But I think that this tank is a great tank uh, for win rates or for grinding credits. It's just, it's an awesome, it's an awesome tank. It's a lot of fun, too. Now, talking about the history of this tank, uh, when I first got into uh, World of Tanks, my favorite YouTuber at the time was Quickie Baby, and he would always rave about the E25, and I was so stoked, and this is the only tank that I wanted in the game at the time. I didn't care about anything else. I wanted the E25, and I knew that when it came in the store, I was going to buy it. I didn't care if it was as good as the PC or not, which it wasn't when it first came out. But now, I would say this thing is just as good, if not better, than the PC version. Uh, and this spot right here is my favorite spot on Winter Malinovka. If your team is able to take the bottom corridor, which always, which isn't always the best idea, but you can lay shots up into the cap circles of both of the uh, B and C area. And as you can see, these targets have absolutely no idea where I am. I'm sitting in a bush with camo nets and binoculars activated, and I am just using this gun. I'm just, <laughs> and I bounced off the light tank. 
but yeah, I'm just sitting here and I'm using this gun. I'm just laying damage out on anyone who comes in front. And there's like three rows of bushes. They have absolutely no shot of uh, spotting me. And as long as you have targets, this spot I believe is the most powerful spot on Winter Malinovka. And you know the ice is going to come up and he has no idea where he's going. He's going to back off quickly. And you can see I can just play shot after shot before he goes back. I know a lot of people at this tier really like the SU-152, which is an, also a great tank. Uh, but I would say the E-25 offers a more consistent playing style. With the SU, it's a lot more situational using that, you know, giant 152mm gun. But the E-25, it's just, it's so, so much fun. It's so much fun to be able to, you know, drive around like a, like a crazy lunatic at 60 miles an hour with, a, you know, machine gun strapped to your tank. And this thing's so low to the ground, too. If you can get up and close and personal to tanks, oftentimes they'll just miss shooting you. And I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to pound this IS. And I'm going to get two shots in and kill him before... Oh, never mind. He backed around the corner. Uh, but I'll shoot him again. And I'm going to get two shots in him before he can shoot me. And then this part's fun. We are so low on points, there's almost nothing that we do to win. So I'm just going to go, and I'm going to try to go out with a bang. And dropping the adrenaline, you get this down to sub three second aims or um, reload time to go and kill tanks which is so much fun you do on average 135 i think which is not very good for a tier but you shoot it so fast like it doesn't even matter and i'm going to come and i'm just going to go kamikaze kill four tanks down here and just lay waste to the team and if it wasn't uh supremacy i th may maybe might have won but i just want to include this one because i did Lots of damage, and it was a really fun battle. Although we lost it, showcasing, you know, a lot of the highlights and the good things of this tank, which is, you know, it's crazy damage. It's an um, insane rate of fire, and it's overall just amazing TD-ness. Now, a lot of people I talk to don't really like D25 just for the fact that it, it is a TD, but I think that if anyone is going to go and, you know, try out a tank destroyer, I think D25 is a great one. Because it's fast, it's hard to flank around, and it really, sh you know, it intros into what TDs are all about, which is, you know, staying back and sniping. But it also gives, you know, the power of almost like a medium. I liken it a lot into a Comet, just without a uh, without a turret. This tank has great gun depression, it has great rate of fire, a lot like the Comet. And I think that this is a good, you know, middle point between a TD and a, and a regular tank. Uh, this battle, I think, is one of my favorites. Lost Temple, I believe, is my favorite map. Uh, it's just such a great map, and if you're able to take out, or if you're able to capture, you know, the pagoda, the top part, you can really control the map from there, and I'm going to showcase that later in this. Um, as you can see in the video, I said, please don't suck in the chat. It's because before this, I had a three loss streak in this tank. Uh, that one battle was included in that loss streak, and each of those losses, I did probably, you know, 2,000, 3,000 damage, which is like double my hit points, which was recently improved, too. Uh, so I was a little bit annoyed about not winning, but you can't be too mad in this tank. Just This tank is such a fun blast to drive that, you know, even losing, like, you have a great time. And uh, in this replay, there is my favorite moment I think I've ever had in a tank destroyer, or just in any tank at all in this game. Uh, since they went down the captured sea, I figured that not many people, or not many of the enemy team was going to be up here, so I pushed strong up into the pagoda. Uh, and I'm going to hold this place. Uh, hopefully provide some fire support down there for C. I know most of the tanks are down there. Um, and I'm just going to lay waste to, you know, whoever comes up here. That poor Panther M10 has no idea what's hitting him right now. And I'm just laying waste to that tank right there. And then I'm going to wait and see if I can get another shot. But looking around, you can see there's an IS there, all isolated right now. And that Iolate, that IS, he is from the clan... The Clan Grimms, which usually is like a 65 to 75 percent clan. So, you know, I know this guy is a pretty decent player, but looking around, he has no support whatsoever. And I get this brilliant idea to just go and charge this guy because he's completely surrounded. And maybe I'll fluke one. I'll take one shot, but there's nothing he can do. And as you can see, I take that one shot, but I'm just going to lay to waste this, you know, this Unicum guy who probably has around 70% win ratio. I'm going to come and I'm just going to out DPM him and I'm just going to shoot him to death. Oh my gosh, this tank is amazing just for this reason. I took out an IS, which is a scary tank, and a Grimms, who is a scary player. And I just went boom and I killed him and it was a great time. Uh, the rest of this match is pretty standard, pretty simple. I'm uh, just going to run around shooting things. Uh, we do end up winning this one too. Not to uh, spoil it or anything, but it's pretty pretty obvious that we're going to win. 
Uh, gonna cap view, we're winning on points, we're winning on tanks. Uh, now this guy right here, I do manage to uh, catch a shot from him, uh, but he's not much of a threat later. Uh, I do want to take out the KV-2. The one thing that this tank does not like is KV-2s, because although it does have, you know, some decent armor, just since it's so low to the ground, I think it has like 50 mill millimeters up front, a KV-2 can one-shot this tank, which has happened to me before, uh, which is not a fun thing. But, you know, as you can see, I'm just ripping him apart right now. Uh, T29 takes the kill, but just the, the machine gun of a gun this thing has just goes boom, 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 boom. And a lot of tanks, I feel like, underestimate this, uh, this tank just because, you know, historically it hasn't been the strongest thing, and it is a bit more difficult to play. Uh, in this battle right here, it's going to be the battle of the Unicums. On their team, they have Defiant and 07, both of which are pretty strong clans. But in our team, we have Grimm's and a, another guy, too. Uh, so this battle I just want to include because I am bottom tier and there's a lot of good players and I want to see how this one played out. Uh, and this one ended up being a, another really good match. Uh, I love Oasis Palms. I think my top three favorite are my, my top three favorite maps are Oasis Palms, Canal, and uh, Lost Temple. All of those are just great, great maps. On um, this one, I debated about going up to the metal bush to go and spot, uh, which as you can see, I'm driving over. Because uh, I really want to get the vision out on my team, see what they do. I'm pretty sure that they're all going to go desert, but I fall, fall back because I'm not high tier. And uh, there's a CDC there, which would have spot, spotted me, which not would not have been good. Uh, but as you can see in this bottom tier match, I'm going to hopefully try to get back, stay in the back. Because I am a tank destroyer, and I can stay at the back of a map. A lot of times with E25 players, they either always stay at the back of the map, or they always rush forward. And in order to you know, have a really effective thing, you want to have a mix of both. Something else to this tank, I forgot to fail to mention, it has 8 degrees of gun depression, which is just amazing. It's so low to the ground and has 8 degrees of gun depression. I can just barely peek over this railroad, and I can just lay waste to this SU right here, which is another really strong tier 7 tank destroyer. As you can see, that clutch shot right there. And I stayed out a little bit too long, and I caught a shot from that, uh, from that CDC right there. Not really my finest moment, but... Uh, I can see that they're going to push up really hard, my team is, and I'm going to hopefully try to go to the back of the map and support my team. There is one of the uh, the Unicums right there in the IS-3 Defender, going to the front like he uh, should have. And I'm going to sit back here and hopefully try to snipe at the CDC, getting a couple shots into him. Uh, that was a bad shot right there. And I'm going to take a shot from him. I wasn't expecting to get spotted, but then I realized that there was a T-43 in the back right there. And again, I'm going to go and do probably my favorite thing in this tank, which is just bully other tanks with your raw DPM out of your position. And I'm just going to come up to him, and he has nothing, there's nothing he can do. I'm going to take him out on two shots, which is, you know, less than six seconds uh, of just firing right there. And then, boom, he's dead. Look at that. What a world. Uh, now I'm going to go forward, and we're going to win this one pretty hands down. There's not much that the enemy team can do. I'm going to go back to my uh, camping spot, hopefully try to get some uh, long-range shots off, because I can still die, and I want to try to win. That uh, 50T over there is going to be much, or a little bit of a problem to me. Uh, but the email and the CDC were both one shots, and they're going to die right now. Uh, I'm just going to wait here and see where that uh, FCM 50T is going to go. And, you know, this tank has pretty decent armor, or not this tank, but the FCM has a pretty decent armor profile. Uh, for a you know a French tier 8 heavy tank, but this tank it can just rip through it And I could have probably shot there But I wanted to you know ensure in there I can shoot right there and you saw the upper play of that tank Which you know typically is a strong thing this thing can go through it like butter and I'm gonna shoot one right there drive forward uh, That was a little bit of a low roll sad to leave him with that much hit points But as you can see another win and this tank I'm not I'm not overselling it. If this thing comes back on the market, you need to buy it. You need to buy it. It was good before, but now it's gone through numerous buffs. And I'd say it's probably the best, the funnest, and the most overpowered Tier 7 tank at the moment right now. Not only for the fact that it is a pure pleasure ride to drive, but it is a good tank also. 2,000 damage came on top, which is pretty impressive uh, for being bottom tier and having the newcomers on the other team. Uh, now this is the last replay of the match actually not the match of the video today. Port Bay has always been a, a good map or one of my favorite maps too, uh, except for Supremacy. Supremacy has always been hard since I really want to go down and go, you know, co-capture B and A, but then C is always in, you know, the historical route of going to the river. Uh, and looking at the maps, I think that we should go press town, which is what we're going to do since we have the heavy advantage and there's two caps down there. 
Uh, another really nice thing about going town with a tank destroyer is that there's these nice ridges that you can stand up on in the back. As you can see, we're going to go town. And I think the majority of my team listens, if not all of them. Uh, but I'm going to go, and you can go back past the house right here. Yep. <laughs> I get stuck in the house real quick. It's fine. Uh, and there's plenty of bushes to, you know, go and hide behind. And I really want to go get some vision out on the A cap, seeing if anyone's going to go down there. Um, so I'm going to camp bush, as you know, you normally do in a tank destroyer, especially U25. It's one of the strongest things you can do in the beginning. And then this little SP1C comes up. And I'm pretty sure that if I fire, I will get spotted. So I try to pull back, and as you can see, I do get spotted. And I'm going to bugger off, because that's what this tank does. And I see that there's a Sioux back there, and I'm like, oh, heck no, that thing is terrifying. Uh, in the beginning of the match, you do not want to be spotted in this tank. And this tank has excellent camo, so it is possible to do that. I'm um, going to go to this bush over here, try to get a different angle out on the SP1C, but nope, that wasn't very effective. Um, I'm going to sit here and hopefully try to catch whatever tank comes along. Oh, and the SP1C drives right in front of my gun, thank you. Uh, something that, you know, it's kind of difficult about this tank is, you know, getting your concentrated fire. With the Su, you can, you know, drive out, drop 600 damage, and then fall back. But this thing only has 135 damage per shot, which, you know, it's not a lot of stopping power, but it shoots out this so quickly. And I'm really hoping this ARL is going to push forward right here, and he does. And this is where this tank just shines. It's just laying waste to tanks. Uh, he's going to drive forward, and, you know, this tank has great accuracy, an insane rate of fire, and I'm just going to... You know, I'll hopefully try to get a track shot. Uh, missed that one too. But he's going to drive forward, and there's nothing this tank can do. A lot of tanks underestimate, you know, the actual reload of this tank. Uh, 135 uh, damage is not a lot of stopping power at this tier, but it just fires it off so quickly that, you know, no tank can do anything about it. I'm going to fire at the Sioux too. Now, this Sioux is going to be interesting. I'm going to stay here, and he's going to drive back, back and forth multiple times, so I'm going to get multiple shots into that tank. Uh, that was a bad shot right there. Uh... And that was also a bad shot, too. Uh, but this tank, you know, even if you miss, you fire uh, another shot so quickly that it's not as devastating as missing, you know, your one 600 damage shot from an SU. Uh, now, here, I can see there's no other tanks around, so I'm going to go. I'm going to drive forward, and I'm going to hopefully try to take out this tank, ramming it. And, you know, the uh, the uh, the E25 is not, not too bad at ramming. It's small, it's very fast, and it actually weighs a little bit more than you would assume. Uh, so don't be afraid to ram this tank too. It doesn't have the greatest armor, and a lot of times you will take damage, but it's so much fun. It just you know adds to the fun. And here I got myself in kind of a situation, sticky situation. So I'm gonna drive, and I'm gonna push up on this J Panther, try to track him as I do right here, and I'm gonna use this J Panther to block the uh, the damage, the shells from that T25 up there. I'm just gonna you know fire again to kill that tank, and that tank is so desperate for a shot right now. He's gonna push up, and he's just completely caught out in the open against four other tanks. I'm going to drive up here, and even if I do take a shot, I have enough health, and I have, you know, the reload to beat this tank on the reload and end up killing, and that is another win for this thing, uh, for the 25. I think after the buff, I played probably 20 battles. I probably won 15 of them, uh, which is great. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. My name is Deventrix, and I hope you all have a good day. Bye.